Hey there, boys and girls. It's almost that time. It's almost time for summer break to begin. So I've flooded your screen with lots of pictures of things that you might be doing this summer. Maybe you're going to the beach or an island where there's lots of sunshine. Maybe you're getting together with your friends to celebrate summer. Or maybe you're going kayaking or going to summer camp or making watermelon ice cream cones or cupcakes. Maybe you're gonna go bike riding or maybe you're gonna go to a water park. Oh, so many things that you can do this summer. But we want to make sure that you don't forget to make reading and writing and practicing your mathematical thinking part of your summer fun. So today I'm going to talk to you about why this is so important and also talk to you about how to set some smart goals to keep your brain growing all summer long. So let me flip to my next slide here. And you might not know that it's so important for you to be successful, to have lots and lots of ongoing opportunities and experiences to learn and practice those essential skills, which are reading and writing and mathematical thinking. This is especially true during those summer months when you're not coming to school. And here's why. Did you know that there is about a hundred years of research that has shown that students typically score lower on tests when they come back in the fall when compared to what their test scores were when they left at the end of the school year. And the reason for that is, is because they're experiencing what we call the summer slide and they have some learning loss because they're not engaging in educational activities during the summer. So it's so important that we take some time today to set some goals for you so that you can keep those reading levels um, where they need to be, where they are, and you continue to grow that brain over the summer. So let's talk about how to set some SMART goals. All right, goal setting is something that successful students, successful people do all throughout life. But there's actually a strategy to setting goals. So we're gonna talk about how to set those SMART goals, okay? Using the SMART goal setting strategy. The first thing that you wanna do when you set a goal is you want to think about what is it that you want to achieve. You want to be very specific about that. When you write a good goal, you should be able to answer who is the goal for, what is the goal about, maybe where, maybe when, and why. So, for example, your goal might be, I want to read 10 books this summer to grow my brain. Then you want to think of a way that you can measure it and track your progress all along the way um, because that will help keep you motivated um, so that you continue to put your best effort into it and you are persistent to achieve that goal even when you face some obstacles. So we're going to think about a way we can measure your progress. Maybe you're going to use a calendar to track how many books you're going to read maybe each week, um, maybe each day. However you decide works best for you. How will you track your progress? Ask mom or dad if you can have a calendar or make yourself a calendar. Be a problem solver if they can't get you a calendar. Certainly you can use the examples I have below here, these calendars, and you can make your own. And I will publish um, this screencast on the Great Seneca Creek website as well as on Edmodo so you can come back and take a look at this if you need it as a resource. The other thing you want to do when you are setting your goals is you want to be action oriented. You want to think about what are the actions that you're going to take so that you can achieve your goal. What's your plan? Maybe your plan is you're going to read at least one book each week. Maybe for you, you're going to read five books each week. Okay. When you're setting what your plan is, Think about what you did last summer in order to ensure that you were reading each week. Think about how many books you read each week. 
give yourself a little bit of a challenge when you're setting your goal so that if you read maybe eight books last summer, change it to 10 books this summer. Because when you're setting goals, you wanna give yourself a little bit of a challenge, but you wanna make sure that it's realistic and it's relevant. And when we say realistic, that means you're thinking about what can I actually get my hands on? If you set your goal at reading 100 books this summer, that might not be realistic if you don't have a library in your house or your parents aren't going to be able to get you to the public library um, maybe every other day so you can check out some books and get them read. You need to make sure that you're challenging yourself, thinking about last summer how many books that you read, thinking about how many books you checked out from the library this year. That might help you when you set your goal and making a realistic one. Maybe thinking about um, how many books you read all year. So if you read eight books last year, like we said, maybe this year you want to challenge yourself by reading two more. You want to add two more to that. You really have to think about yourself and what you know you will be able to achieve. Okay. The other thing is, when we're setting our SMART goals, is we want to think about the time that we have. Um, by what time should your goal be accomplished? So by August 25th, when we return to school, you will have met your goal. So when we're thinking about setting SMART goals, we want to keep the SMART goal setting strategy in mind. So let's look at the next page. So after this screencast, you're going to get a... Um, paper or worksheet that looks like this where you're going to be monitoring your progress so far and setting some goals for yourself this summer. Make sure you put your name up here and your teacher's name because you're going to turn this into Miss Norris after you complete it. And if you already know what your current reading level is, you know what level you're on, you can put that right here. Um, and then books checked out and read this year. Um, if you um, ask your teacher. Um, you should all be receiving a certificate that tells you how many total library books you checked out this year so you'll have that information to help you. Um, let me go back so you can see how many books you checked out this year and then based on how many books you checked out and read the last 10 months um, you'll want to make a goal for, for the summer and if you checked out 52 books and it took you 10 months to read 52 books, you might want to make your goal for the summer a little bit less than that because that would be realistic if you're only going to have about 3 months or 72 days in actuality um, to read this summer. You want to make sure it's realistic and it's reasonable. It's attainable. Okay, and then think about what is a plan for you to reach your summer goal. And again, if you take a look at the um, screencast and we were talking about a plan for yourself, think about how many books you might read each week. Um, that might be your plan. Maybe you're gonna read one book each week. Maybe you're gonna write down how many books you're gonna read each day. Maybe you're gonna think about how and when are you gonna be able to get those books um, maybe you're going to write down, I'm going to go to the public library at least three times to get the books I need. Maybe you're going to write down when you're going to read. I mean, are you going to read at night? Are you going to read in the morning? Um, maybe your plan is to make a calendar for yourself where you can plan what days um, you're going to visit the library and which days you're going to read each week. And then you can monitor it, track your progress by checking off when you read meet those small goals for yourself. Maybe you want to start a book club with your friends so you can kind of keep one another motivated and share books that you're reading. Okay, So those are a couple of things that you can write in when you are setting your plan. You can also choose, and you don't have to fill out all of these goals, but I would like for everyone to do at least set one goal for themselves this summer. At least one goal. If you want to do all three, that's awesome. But set at least one goal for yourself. Go on MyOn and check to see how many books that you've read so far on MyOn. Your teacher can help you um, check how many books that you've read. 
You can set a goal for, for the summer of how many Mayan books that you want to read. Again, you want to think about, is it a realistic number that you're putting in here? If you put 100 books in there, how many books are you going to have to read each day if there's only 72 um, days in the summer? Think about, are you going to be able to access Mayan enough to read 100 books? So you really have to put some thought into making those SMART goals. A lot of times boys and girls just put big numbers in here, but they're not really realistic. So think about realistic. What can you do? What do you plan to do to reach your goal again? Make a plan for yourself. Maybe you're going to read a certain number of my own books each week. Maybe you're going to keep track on a calendar. How are you going to motivate yourself um, in order to reach your summer goal? You can also practice your writing on Edmodo um, and if you want to see how many posts you have so far on Edmodo to check your progress currently you can click on the little me symbol when you log into Myon and then select profile underneath the me menu and that'll tell you how many posts that you have so far on Edmodo and you can set a goal for yourself of how many posts um, that you want to um, write this summer and think about is it realistic and reasonable and what do you plan to do to reach your summer goal and again I'd like for everyone to set at least one goal how many books um, printed books that you're gonna read this summer or how many books you're gonna read on my on or how many posts you're gonna do on Edmodo and then tell us what your plan is to reach your goal and then I'm gonna ask teachers to turn in your summer goal sheet to Miss Norris and then in the fall we'll revisit and reflect on how you did on reaching your goal. See if your plan worked um, and we'll set some new goals for you to continue growing your brain next year when you move up to the next grade level. So I hope everyone has a fantabulous summer and I want to tell you that later on this week I will have another screencast to explain to you how to work on those summer packets because those summer packets will also help you continue to grow your reading, writing, and math skills. So keep watching for the next screencast. And again, we'll post these screencasts on Edmodo if you want to rewatch them. If you need to rewatch them because you forgot, we'll also post them on the Great Seneca Creek website for you to revisit as needed. So set some great SMART goals today, and we'll see you soon. Bye now.